fellow Ugandans, countrymen and women, O people of God, I joyfully greet you with the peace and grace of Christmas. Today, soon after the birth of the Savior, the heaven is opened down to earth with a melodious song, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests, as we read in Luke 2, verse 14. How blessed are we to be so favored to the point of becoming children of God, a dignity that God has not even granted the angels. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, today I have become your father, as we read in Hebrews 1, verse 5. Christmas time is a celebration of our faith. We know and profess that God became man, as we read in John 1, verse 14, to embrace all that is human except sin, Hebrews 4, verse 15. And to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. This time of Advent has been preparing us to this event, giving us therefore a privileged opportunity to meditate on the meaning and value of our existence. The approach of this ceremony helps us on the one hand to reflect on the drama of history in which, in which people injured by sin are perennially in search of happiness and of feeling, feeling the sense of life and death. On the other hand, it urges us to meditate on the merciful kindness of God who came to man to communicate to him directly the truth that saves and to enable him to partake his friendship and his life. It is for this reason that Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI said that therefore let us prepare ourselves for Christmas with humility and simplicity, making ourselves ready to receive as a gift the light, joy, and peace that shine from this mystery. As we read in the, from, from Pope Benedict XVI, when he gave the audience, general audience in December 17th, on December 17th, 2008. Christmas is a family celebration. In his Christmas message of the year 2020, the Holy Father, Pope Francis, went on to stress that the beauty of Christmas shines through the sharing of small gestures and concrete love. The Word became flesh in order to dialogue with us. God does not desire to carry on a, mono, a, monologue, a, monologue, a monologue, but a dialogue. For God himself, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is a dialogue. An eternal and infinite communion of love and life. The degree of true joy and sharing in our families will tell the quality of our celebration of Christmas. Is this not what we learn from the Holy Father of Nazareth, from the Holy Family of Nazareth? And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger, as we read in Luke 2, verse 16. So looking at our society and families today, especially in our country, Uganda, we cannot close our eyes to the following challenges. The effect of COVID-19 
and now recently Ebola outbreak. The loss of family values in society. The disappearance of some of our brothers and sisters who are still kept in incognito. The increase in poverty caused by the rise of prices for almost all commodities. The world economic recession, corruption, and abuse of office. Adversities and suffering arising from land grabbing. Uncontrolled road accidents that have caused the loss of many lives and of the innocent people. The rampant domestic violence, which is quite in today's society. It is for these reasons, dear brothers and sisters, that I humbly call upon you to remember that in the cold of the night, the baby Jesus stretches out his tiny arms towards us, calling us to strengthen open dialogue, to yearn more for reconciliation and fraternity, to keep the beauty of our land, as we read in Laudato Si of Pope Francis, well, at the same time, the voice of the angels from heaven continues to invite us. Peace be on earth. A Christmas is a call to walk together. By divine providence, we celebrate this Christmas when the Synod of Synodality by Pope Francis is still in progress. Its main theme is working together in communion, participation, and mission. As we celebrate Christmas for this year, 2022, I call upon all peace-loving Ugandans, all the leaders in this country, be it political, religious, cultural, and local leaders to work for peace and promote a just working together. Wherever possible, let us support all those who provide humanitarian aid to the needy, especially the refugees, the children, the sick, and the aged. Let us be a source of light and support for all those who believe and strive to promote dialogue. In celebrating the joy and peace of Christmas, let us remember to comfort the victims of violence against women, which has recently increased in time of the COVID pandemic. I know that through our pastoral structures, we can ably volunteer to offer hope to young children and adolescents suffering from bullying and abuse. While wishing you a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, let me conclude with this prayer of Saint Paul, Saint Pope John Paul II, which is prayed at Angelus in Saint Peter's Square in 2003. May the Virgin Mary. Help us to open the doors of our hearts to Christ. Redeemer of man and history, may she teach us to be humble because God looks upon the lowly. May she enable us to grow in understanding the value of prayer, of inner silence, of listening to God's word. May she spur us to seek God's will deeply and sincerely even when this upsets our plans. And she encourages us while we wait for the Lord, sharing our time and the energies with those in need. Mother of God, Virgin of Expectation, grant that the God who comes will find us ready to receive the abundance of his mercy. May Mary, most holy, woman of the Eucharist, and Virgin of Advent, prepare us all to joyfully welcome Christ's coming 
and to celebrate worthily his sacramental presence in the mystery of the Eucharist. Amen. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as, as it was, was in the beginning, is now, and now, and ever shall, shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.